Moving on with factoring polynomials, so far we've learned the common factor technique and the factor by grouping technique. So this is the time where we learn our trinomial technique. Now we've learned that the polynomial is named a trinomial when it has three terms in it. So this technique was obviously only going to work when it has three terms. Now we know that multiplication of polynomials and factoring of polynomials are opposites. And we know that there's different ways to multiply polynomials, like distributing, foiling, so on and so forth. And we saw that in the common factor video, that that is the exact opposite of distributing. We see here that trinomials are the exact opposite of foiling. But before we actually do an opposite of foiling, let's just do an actual foil. So in this example here, we're going to multiply this out. And again, multiplication is the opposite of factoring. So this is the opposite of what our goal is in this video. But for me to show you correctly how to work it the other way, I think it's easier to see how to work it this direction first. So when I FOIL this, I do first x times x, which gives me x squared. Outside gives me a negative 2x. Inside gives me a negative 6x. And last gives me a positive 12. And then I can combine my middle terms, my like terms, gives me x squared minus 8x plus 12. So here is my answer of this problem. Now again, what we just did is we foiled this. So we went from here to here by foiling. Our ultimate goal in this video is to go from here to here by unfoiling or by factoring using our trinomial technique. So let's go ahead and move on to this trinomial technique, but we're going to do the exact same example that we just worked through. So we see the work that we did just right here, and now I'm taking the end result and I'm going to be starting with this. And since I know my answer, this is going to be easier to see how this works. Hopefully, that's my goal. All right, I know that I have three terms, one, two, three. So I know that this is a trinomial, and I know that this is the opposite of foiling. So that means I should end up with a binomial times a binomial, or a two by two. So I'm going to need to put terms in all of those colors there, and in between those terms, I'm going to have to come up with a sign. All right, let us try and figure out how to do this. Now, I do this by just working my FOIL process backwards, but if you've learned this a different method, that is perfectly fine. You do not need to relearn the method that you've already learned. I know some teachers in high schools and other places teach the AC method. If you know that method, continue to use it. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. I just prefer this method instead. So I need to fill in these blanks. And again, I work through the opposite of my FOIL process. So in my FOIL process, I find my first times first to give me my first guy here. So I need to fill in my first times first blank to give me this first choice here. And I only have one choice to fill in those blanks. X times X gives me X squared. I don't have any other options at this time. Now, in my FOIL process, I jump to my last. I'll come back to the middle two things here in a minute. So, I take my last times my last to give me my last term. Or, in backwards format, I need something here times something here to give me this 12 here. Now, it's almost like a guess and check method. We don't always know the answer right away. And some of these trinomials are much easier than others. This one happens to be one of the easy ones. But just to show you how to set this up for the more complicated ones, I need to come up with something times something to give me 12. So I can take 2 times 6. 
I can take 3 times 4, or I could even take 1 times 12. So this is my guess, and then I have to work it out to check method. Now, in this example, I already know my answer because I see it over here on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and use your 6 and your 2. But I'll try and give you some hints in our next few examples to figure out how to get a better check of what these are because you won't have this over here to look off of. Now I'm going to do the middle process of my foil. So I've done the first, I've done my last. Now I need to look at my outside and my inside together. And when I put those together, that should give me my middle term here. So my outside gives me a 2 times x or a 2x. My inside gives me a 6 times x or a 6x. And I know that I need to add these up to give me this negative 8x here, to give me a negative 8x here. So my numbers work out properly. All I need to do is figure out the signs. Well, if I had a negative 2 and a negative 6, and I add those together, that gives me a negative 8x. So I come back through, and I put in my appropriate signs. Now the last thing I need to check is, does that work out to give me my last sign here? That's the only thing I haven't worked through, I haven't highlighted. And of course, a negative times a negative gives me a positive here. So we have worked this FOIL process backwards, and we have our answer down here. So let me just rewrite this without the colors. So my final answer is x minus 6 times x minus 2. And notice that's what I started out with here, so I know that I did this properly. But it does not matter if you have your whole set of parentheses reversed. So if you came up with your answer was x minus 2 times x minus 6, that is okay as well. It's all going to multiply out to give you the same thing. So either one of these is an appropriate answer. All right, so now that we've walked through this process, let's see some more examples of this, and we'll see some easy examples and some hard examples. So I have two examples here. Um, one of them is a little bit easier than the other. Example one is easier than example two. But at this time, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can factor these by using the trinomial process. Okay, now I told you in the first video when we did common factor that you should always look for that first, no matter what other technique we're really focusing on at hand. So don't forget to check that here. So looking at example one, I want to double check that I do not have any common factors throughout, and I don't. I see that I have three terms, so I can factor this by using my trinomial technique, which is the exact opposite of foiling. So I just set this up by my two sets of parentheses, and I need to fill in those blanks. So first, something times something gives me x squared. Well, this is an easier example because I don't have any choices. All I have is x times x. Last, I need something times something to give me 33, and those goes in my last places. I don't have too many options here. I have 1 times 33, or I have 3 times 11. Now, this is an easier example because since I don't have any numbers here, that means I can just add and subtract these factors up to give me my middle term. Now, if I have a number here, that's going to make this a much more difficult process. And we'll talk about that when we get over to example two. So I know 3 and 11, if I subtract those, that gives me 8. So those are the numbers that I'm going to use, 3 and 11. And I put them this way, but if you put the 11 in the first parentheses and the 3 in the second parentheses, that's all the same. So now let me check to make sure that this works out and to figure out my signs. My outside gives me an 11x. My inside gives me a 3x. And I'm looking to come up with a positive 8x. And so 
if I take 11 minus 3, that gives me a positive 8x, which is what I'm looking for. So I find my 11, it's going to be a positive number because it's positive here. I find my 3 and make it negative because it's negative here. Double check my last sign is a negative 3 times a positive 11. Give me a negative 33, and it does. So that gives me my final answer of x minus 3 times x plus 11, or x plus 11 times x minus 3, whichever order you have it in. So let's look over to example 2. Again, the first question is, do I have any common factors throughout? Don't forget, always look for a common factor first. I do not. I notice I have three terms, so I'm going to set up my two sets of parentheses. So, first, something times something to, to give me 2p squared. Now, this one's a little bit more complicated because I have a number in front here. Doesn't seem that much different at this instance, but it will here later on. So my only choices of that are 2p times p. Moving on to my last, I have something times something to give me 3. I only have one choice here, 1 times 3 or 3 times 1. Now I told you this is a guess and check method. This is my guess. I want to check and make sure that that works. My outside gives me a 2p, my inside gives me a 3p, and I either want to add or subtract these to come up with my middle term, which is a positive 7p. And it doesn't matter how I work it, I will never get a 7 in this instance. I can add them and subtract them, but I never get 7. So that means that I do not have this factored correctly at this time. Now, that doesn't mean I cannot factor it. So what I suggest that you do is you cross it out and you try again. So let me set up these parentheses again. I'm going to keep my 2p times p the same, but let me rearrange the other two numbers. And that's why it becomes much more complicated when you have this number in front, because you have to do the multiplication by that number rather than just adding and subtracting them. So again, my outside gives me a 6p, my inside gives me a 1p, and I am looking to come up with this positive 7p here. And I can make that work if both of these are positive. So I go back up here and I make both of these answers positive. Double check my last sign, positive times positive does give me positive. So this gives me my final answer here. And again, the order of parentheses does not matter. So I've done a couple examples of factoring trinomials. I'm going to stop this video here. In the next video, I'm going to do a couple more examples, but these are going to be much more complicated than the examples that we've seen thus far.